Okay, let's talk about a system in terms of systems engineering. When we talk about engineering systems industrially or as systems engineers, we, we need to classify systems into ranges of types of systems because not all systems are the same and we may be designing things at very, very different scales at very, very different times. So a key thought process for us will be how should we classify the systems that we're interested in? How do we define the scope, the scale, the type of system that we're dealing with at any given time? Um, one way is to look at an entire system. As industrial and systems engineers, we're interested in systems at very, very large scales. Uh, so one way to look at it is as all systems are ecological systems, where these are things that function on a grand scale, rivers moving water and wind moving air, things of that nature. So typically very large scale, complicated or chaotic systems will tend to constitute ecosystems or ecological systems that we're interested in. This class of systems is most relevant whenever we're trying to combine components, often smaller systems, in ways that they aren't prepared to do naturally. So things that haven't been designed to go together, like the healthcare system in, in a city. Um, that comprise a system, but they're ecological to the extent that they're not designed to work as a single system. So the competition um, is often offsets among the different systems as opposed to their cooperation. So, so ecological systems are the large scale context within which things happen. At the lower end of the continuum, we have mechanical systems. Uh, sometimes they're intentionally designed, sometimes they're not. They tend to range from the very simple to the very complicated. But mechanical systems, like ecological systems, perform a function. They have no purpose in and of themselves. The function they perform really defines how they'll be used by others in your in an organization or in an individual. So ecological systems and mechanical systems are more or less functional. You can describe the functions they provide and what they enable to happen. Uh, but they don't drive as their own dynamic in and of themselves as they go through. So, but these are the two kinds of systems we often find ourselves working in at the extremes. An example of that might be if we look at Lake Erie Watershed in upstate New York and uh, southern Canada, which the function of which is to collect and consolidate rainfall and transfer it to the um, Atlantic Ocean via the Niagara River. That's an, it's an ecological system in a very, very large scale sense. Niagara Falls, on the other hand, is a mechanical system. It's, it's simply a linear function. It's fu increased the linear momentum of water in the river by allowing it to fall in the gravitational field. That's what a waterfall is. Why it's doing it, we don't even ask that kind of question. Just that's its function. It accelerates water. Now, while it's not definitional in the purest sense, we expect uh, ecological systems will exhibit some form of chaos uh, that manufactured systems won't. So typically, we can tell the difference between the two by looking at the scale of complexity or chaos that emerges from their operation, although it's, a, it's, all, it's very, very cyclic and it's a function of what you're looking at as a system engineer. Uh, but most projects in some way touch on eco ecological or mechanical systems. Within that, we, we introduce ourselves as engineers. E ecosystems and many mechanical systems exist whether we're there to engineer around them or not. So the first purposeful kind of system we're interested in as industrial engineers and system engineers are organismic systems, people, um, animals, plants, living, living matter, if you will, uh, that tends to have purpose. So we don't say people have a function. Uh, we tend to talk in terms of their purpose, their personal mission, their value systems, and what they're hoping to achieve in life. Uh, there are purposes to organismic systems. So any distinct biological individual that's capable of varying their behavior in multiple ways uh, in response to stimuli would be an organismic system. An organismic system is typically exists within an ecosystem, within the ecological system, and it's typically made up of mechanical systems. So you and I, as human beings, uh, are made up of mechanical systems. We have a cardiovascular system, and a pulmonary system, and a muscular system, and a skeletal system. Those are all mechanical systems that make us up. They perform a function, but don't have their own purpose. Uh, we put their function to purpose by having them as part of us as we go through. And the in an interesting relationship as engineers between the organismic systems and mechanical systems is that some mechanical systems evolve within the ecosystem uh, and some are designed. As engineers, we're interested in both and we want to influence both. Um, biological evolution is a good example of our mechanical systems in our bodies evolving to, perf to perform their functions and make us as human beings possible. But there are also evolutions of larger scale mechanical systems and organizations and constructs and procedure manuals and, and just the way culture operates 
um, are mechanical systems within the broader ecosystem that are subject to terms of ev evolution. So not all evolution is biological evolution. In healthcare, we're particularly interested in biological evolution. Uh, but, we're, but also as engineers, we want to put design into things. So we tend to design mechanical systems. Information technology systems are a good example. We design our IT systems to perform functions that we want done that will enable us to better serve our purposes. So these scales of organizations, though, get put together at some point into the main level we're interested in is industrial and system engineers, and that's societal systems. Uh, an organization is a great example of a societal system, although not all societal systems are um, organizations. But we tend to engineer new organizations and new relationships among um, the organisms within our basic ecosystems as we go through. So for, as an engineer doing industrial and system engineering, more often than not, the target of our engineering is some form of societal system. We're interested in how those societal systems exist within the ecological systems within which they exist, and we're interested in how the people, usually, but organismic systems within the societal system tend to interact and, and fulfill their purposes while providing function within the social system. And all of that gets done with mechanical systems um, that, that take hold that we actually produce in our engineering process. If I look across those four different classes of system, I see there are many endeavors and areas of study that we should be paying attention to as engineers. We don't just want to study engineering. We want to know about a lot of fields. On the mechanical end, we want to understand biology and mechanics, electronics and chemistry. Um, when we're dealing with people at the organismic level, we're interested in psychology and ergonomics. Uh, societal systems, we're interested in anthropology and sociology and economics. Uh, and at the ecological layer, we're interested in ecology and meteorology and geology. Those are the sciences and areas of study that most influence what we do. I'm often asked as an instructor as systems engineering, uh, if my students could take one more elective, what would I want them to take? And I always answer the same, anthropology. If you're going to be dealing with designing societal systems or modifying societal systems, one branch of knowledge you want to become more and more conversant in over time is anthropology. Going back to the example I shared earlier, that Lake Erie watershed being um, an ecological system and Niagara Falls being a mechanical system within that, you introduce engineers into that formula and you no longer just have elements of nature. So for, perhaps we engineer an Erie Utilities as an organization in upstate New York. Uh, its purpose is to generate shareholder profits by exploiting uh, the Lake Erie watershed in particular and the Niagara uh, waterfall in particular. Um, they, that societal system builds a power station, Niagara Power Station, which is a mechanical system for converting the linear momentum of water in the Niagara River into hydroelectric power. Um, so we implement societal systems with their mechanical systems to achieve our engineering ends, uh, recognizing that that always takes place within the context of ecological systems that drive in the capabilities of the environment. To one societal system in two different places can't necessarily perform the same way, even if they're the same societal system, because the ecological environment in which they reside will be completely different. Operating a hospital in New York City is very different than operating a hospital in London. Not because the internals of the hospitals are that different, but because the ecology, the, the cities in which they reside, the nations in which they perform their functions, uh, might have very, very different support functions available for that. So keeping track of the four classes of systems. As industrial engineers, we'll typically work on societal systems, creating new roles for organismic systems and new mechanical systems, but always in the context of an ecological system. So when you're dealing with defining a system as an engineer, make sure you're clear on what kind of system you're always working on and challenge yourself. If you think you're working only on a mechanical system, Please challenge yourself. Unless you're a mechanical engineer, that's very unlikely to be true. As an industrial or systems engineer, you almost always work on a societal system. Big or small, your job is to affect societal systems through the alteration of their ecological environment, the changing of job descriptions and position descriptions for organismic systems, and obviously the engineering and reinvention of mechanical systems that will serve all the basic functions the organization needs. But typically we're focusing on a scope that is labeled as a societal system, and that's the centerpiece of industrial and systems engineering.